Hello everyone, uh, we're Iron Horse, uh, all four of us here, far right over there. Uh, my far right is Ricky Rogers, plays bass and vocals. Sitting next to him is banjo uh, player Anthony Richardson. Uh, he does vocals and some, some bass parts and, and baritone. And then right here next to me, this short cup of coffee is Tony Robertson, and he plays mandolin and vocals, good songwriter. All three of those guys are good songwriters and, and musicians, and I'm glad to be a part of them. Uh, my name is Vance Henry. I play guitar and, and sing some lead parts. Um, and we're Iron Horse, and we're glad to be here. Uh, we're just going to give you a little background on some of the things that we've done in the past and how we got started on the path that we're on. Well, we started out the, the band, and uh, Ricky and I were playing with Jake Landers in Jake Landers' band, and, and we decided we wanted to do something a little different, just something different than the, what we traditionally did with bluegrass. And uh, so we started out with uh, thinking about some of the songs we did back in the late 70s, sort of rock songs that were bluegrass songs, became bluegrass songs eventually. And so with that thought in mind, just doing something different, we got started with the idea, let's do something different. That's harder to do than you would think because you can think that and, and you can kind of wish for that, but it's hard for it to come along. And CMH came along and, and just really laid it in our lap and said, hey, could you guys do uh, bluegrass uh, tributes to Metallica? So, so we our ears perk up and go, I don't know about that. If we can turn Metallica into bluegrass, but... We'll give it a shot. So they sent a couple of tracks out and said, how about demoing a couple of those tracks? And, and so that's how we kind of got started doing it. It was a sort of a long trail of about a year and a half up to completing that project. But that's how we got started doing uh, the tribute stuff. And that was back in 2000, 2001, right in that area right there. I think it was late 2002, <laughs> early 2003 when that project came out. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have something like that presented to you, uh, we'd like for you to take bluegrass instruments and uh, cover Metallica songs. Uh, one of the things that we decided very early on is we were not going to take a tongue-in-cheek approach at this. Uh, our desire was to always uh, respect the original artist's renditions and, and try to keep those uh, things in mind as we were doing it. Basically what it amounted to is uh, we would take uh, the, the lyrics, and listen to the song, and then we'd sit down with the guitar and start methodically working out each part. And uh, after a while, it just seemed like the more and more we did that, the easier it got. But early on, some of the things that we had to get used to, uh, looking at things a little bit out of the box from a bluegrass standpoint, it, it took a little time, you know, and it, the more and more we did it, the easier it got, it seemed. And I think that uh, that first project, Fade to Bluegrass, was the first uh, cover, bluegrass cover tribute project that CMH put out that had vocals. Prior to that, everything was uh, just instrumentals and they just kind of did acoustic versions of that. So they pushed us, said, we, we don't want you to do carbon copies of, of what they, the original artists did. We want you to, we want you to do your, uh, trans, your, your way you interpret this. We want you to do it that way and give us that. And that was great, you know, a, a, a lot of freedom, and, and it made it a lot more enjoyable than trying to chase something that someone else did. And we would look at, look for the riffs, the, what we would consider the hooks, uh, the, the, the things, and try to put those in, into the song, uh, maybe as intros, but we, we didn't follow things, you know, the way the original artists did. And we did, we tried to stay with the melody lines that they did as much as possible. Uh, but sometimes, some of the songs, there wasn't a melody. So we had to, to even create a melody for to put behind the lyrics because it wasn't, uh, wasn't there in the original uh, composition. Uh, all the covers, at least to me, with the exception of one or two that CMH wanted us to look at were a pretty big stretch for us, or it was for me. I mean, we you know, we had a self-produced album called Riding Out the Storm, and I guess the uh, the primary cover song that we did was Marshall Tucker's 
uh, uh, fire, fire on the mountain. mountain. And uh, so, you know, that's, that, that translates really well to a, a bluegrass tune. And of course, we had done some, some John Denver stuff, but we, we really were, as, as Vance and, and some of the other guys have alluded to, kind of took us out of our comfort zone to take a song that had non-traditional chord arrangements like a, a G, C, D, and A, or A minor, or, and, and, and uh, it's just, it was just really a challenge to put all that together, but uh, we kept the signature riffs and, and people recognize it, although it's not identical to what Metallica or uh, Ozzy Osbourne or Led Zeppelin or any of those guys did. It was, uh, uh, people walk by and they hear you playing that and they kind of look puzzled as to, you know, I, I, I recognize that song, but who did it? And then when it hits them, you can see that they realize that, hey, those guys are doing Metallica stuff. So uh, we feel like we've kind of uh, blazed a small trail for other groups to look outside of, of what they normally do. And when we first began, you know, we had the question mark look at, that was natural, that was what everyone I think would do, Metallica and, blue, and Bluegrass, can that work together? And that was curious. But when we recorded the first two tracks, as Tony said, I think that was Unforgiven and Nothing Else Matters. And uh, we could see that there was something there. Uh, and so CMH listened to it, they liked it, they come back to us and said, we originally intended to do this with other artists and just make a compilation of Metallica songs done by various bluegrass artists, but we like the two cuts that you guys have done and we want you to, to do the whole project. So we're gonna go uh, seek permission from Metallica to do this. And we liked it so much, so we just kept working on it. You know, even because we said there's some potential here. And I can remember Andy coming into my booth on the third song after we had recorded it. He said, Vance, I think we're on to something. And that's just stuck with me because it felt right. You know, to me, it felt like it had some potential, even on the third song. Well, we've, we've got, uh, I think, 17 total <clears throat> projects out so, and several self-produced projects that, are, that lean a little more traditional to bluegrass. So uh, through this process, we really haven't, you know, lost our zeal for doing traditional bluegrass. We still, we still love to do it and, and still do, we do it in every set. We do some traditional stuff to go right along with this. So as far as the band goes and, and uh, what we hope to leave behind one of these days is that, that we didn't completely abandon our roots and being from, we're all from musical families. My uncles played. Uh, bluegrass music had a band uh, together, and that's how I learned, come to love the music is through them playing. Andy's dad played in, in bands and, and had, a, had a long history of playing. So, so we've all you know, engaged in the musical part of this. Uh, so it, it was almost natural for us to do uh, some of the things that we've done, including the traditional stuff. We, don't, we, we haven't uh, aspired just to completely walk off and leave the roots that we started from. And, and I'm, I'm really proud that we've hung on to a lot of that along the way and, and not got too far from it and forgot a, about our raising, so to speak. You know, you, uh, we get a lot of feedback. Uh, I would say 99% of it's been positive. Um, there's a few of metal, metal naysayers that probably didn't like it as much as others. We have been cursed. But we, we, we yeah. predominantly have gotten positive feedback. In fact, if you go to our website, uh, ironhorsebluegrass.com, you can read some of the comments in the guest book there, and it goes way back. And, and some of the stuff you, you read on there is pretty neat. I think probably the neatest one I can think of is uh, a guy made a comment that for the first time, me and my father can ride in the same car and listen to the same music together. So we felt like we bridged a gap there, and that's important, you know. Yeah, I like the one, too, that's where the guy says, uh, hey, these guys look like they made a wrong turn to get headed to a golf tournament. <laughs> a bunch of accountants. We, we, didn't look, we don't look like, the, you know, guys who would be out doing and this kind was, of music. What was the know? other one? Grandpa <laughs> should have stuck to blowing on the jug. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the, th the, the funny thing about that is a few years back we played – a festival in Louisville, Kentucky called Louder Than Life. Uh, we were the only bluegrass band there. This was uh, 
uh, Anthrax, Slayer, Slayer, and, yeah. and uh, Corn, Corn, and, and yeah. yeah, I mean all these really, really hard heavy metal bands. And uh, here we are in our little tent covering Metallica, but uh, we got a little bit of attention out of that, so it was uh, uh, humbling to be a part of that. We just had slightly heavy wood. That was about that's about all we brought to that. Yeah, no heavy metal. <laughs> no well, metal. The heaviest metal was on the band, Joe. Yeah, that's, that's about all we. That's about all we. Well, had. We, we've done Ten from started as as uh, Tony said. Our first project was self-produced project. It had that uh, fire on the mountain uh, song on it, and and his son, the writer of that song, uh, sent us a, a comment and said, "This is the way the fire on the mountain. Our version of fire on the mountain." He said, "This is the way, Dad." wanted the song to to be uh and, and so we were appreciative of that mm. but we went from riding out the storm our first project for cmh on the cover tribute things was fade to bluegrass then we did ozzy osbourne's black and bluegrass a tribute to ozzy osbourne uh, then we did led zeppelin a whole lot of bluegrass then we did modest mouse uh, and we had to familiarize ourselves with that. We may have, some of us may have heard of that group, but they're up Not in me. Seattle. And, 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 <laughs> and, and, and that <laughs> was, as Ricky said, that was a stretch to do his music. And it was, it was a project that CMH wanted to be completed very fast. So they, uh, the, their, their hit song being Getting Airplay at the time was Float On. So that's what CMH was trying to capitalize on. So. That's the first one we, we, we cut. But, yeah. uh, we did that, what, in two weeks we cut that? The whole, two weeks. whole project. Two weeks, two weeks, and yeah. we didn't even know the Learn the songs. So, and, <laughs> and so I think we, Vance made the comment one time. There were times he would be driving to the studio listening to the actual CD, listening, trying to learn the lyrics, you know, before he got there. So it was, man, that was, that was really a, a cram course in Modest well, We didn't do too many projects that, that actually had drum and fife cores in them. Modest Mouse was a bit of a stretch for that. Yep. You had to had to peel that back and see what the song actually was in, in a really short period of time. Two weeks is a ridiculously short period of time to do a project like that. It usually took us about three, four months. Got a lot of wedding gigs off of that. But you yeah, know, it, we married it, a lot of people on that. It one. was uh, it was in, it was interesting because it taught us something that if if you have to do something, sometimes if you'll get out of your comfort zone and, and, and if you just you got to do the best you can in this moment because of time time constraints you can achieve some success and that project proves it you know and it, it's one of you know one of our most big ones yeah. you know but after that we did another ver a volume two of the fade to bluegrass then we did a guns and roses uh, project called Going Home. That turned out real good. We added the fiddle on that, had Donnie Carpenter playing fiddle with us on yep. that. Then we did a Shins project, uh, the Goo Goo Dolls. Black Label Society. Black Label Society did a, and did a more traditional Hank Williams Sr. gospel project. So Somewhere down through there we did Led Zeppelin too. Yeah, he mentioned that. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But then uh, I guess the last thing we did for CMH was the uh, Nirvana thing, wasn't it? Or was there? Yeah, yeah, that's, yes, that's Nirvana. The last part, what two years ago? Maybe probably three now. Yeah, probably. Yeah, the way time's getting away. So yeah, we have a last video one. of uh, what's the song? Um, all, all apologies. apologies. Yeah. Have yeah. a video of that on our YouTube channel. And what's interesting about that one is that it's not on uh, CD. So, so it's download, you know, a download project only. So we, we, they pressed some vinyl, I think, to 2,500 copies of vinyl, and, and it sold out like a day, uh, which is amazing. But it shows you how music is changing and evolving, and some people are going backwards with the, with the way they listen to music. Some people are going forward. Uh, our streaming is just is, is off the hook. I mean, it's incredible how many times... Uh, when we get our statement from CMH, how many streams that we've had on a lot of these songs, it's it's mind-boggling. But people are not buying music like they yeah. used to buy it, but like they prefer to listen to it sometimes in different Correct. formats now. I even heard the other day where cassettes are coming back, but we never did anything on a cassette, so we're out of luck in that market. <laughs> You know, but, but late, late on, too, you know, we just, uh, what, I mean, the last few years, we really just started concentrating on putting a few videos out, too, on yeah. YouTube, and, and we found out there's a lot of mileage in that, you know, and we've been doing that all along. Uh, but 
that we've had a lot of fun doing that. We didn't realize how camera friendly we were. (laughs) Or unfriendly, whatever the case might be. It's kind of like watching us sometimes, kind of like watching a car wreck, you know, when you're driving down there, you You just see what's going on. You you got to see what's going on. (laughs) What are they doing? Funny thing is, though, (laughs) during this whole process, we've all aged about 20 years. Oh, yeah. So time gets away from you. It sure does. Uh, Do it when you can, as long as you can, because. Mother Nature is going to catch up to you. Well, it, it's been convenient for us also because we live within five or six miles of each other, and and we've been able to manage this from 2001, basically the end of 2001 to 2018, without getting in a fist fight. Uh, when we go out and eat, we still all four sit at the same table, and <laughs> and that's more than can be said for a lot of groups. I know that's because we're trying to get each other's leftovers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But we've, we've all seen our, each other's kids go from this big to adults with kids of their own. And uh, uh, so that's, uh, and, and, and people still don't believe it uh, when our kids tell other folks, well, my, my daddy is in this band and they do this. And people shake their heads and say, they're old men. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> we'll do it as long as we can. Thank you.